All right, we're ready. Good day, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. I've been really looking forward to this conversation. Um, and the reason for that is, of course, the topic, but we have three experts in the room who will be, be able to share tons of insights and great information with, uh, with you around Google Analytics 4, which will be replacing Universal Analytics. So let me introduce you to um, our guests uh, and our conversation partners for today. Um, so of course, if you joined our webinar in the past, you'll be very familiar with Ivan. Ivan is my conversational partner on these webinars, our resident uh, host and panelist. Right. Res resident resident, resident DJ. panelist, yeah, yeah. like a resident DJ at a club, resident so If panelist. you have any feedback on the music, it's all Ivan. No? And that as well, yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Ivan, as mentioned, we get together um, every month, a couple of months, talk about relevant topics, anything that's on your mind, um, and anything that we, we feel is uh, highly relevant in the industry at the moment. So thank you again for joining this conversation. We do have a new addition uh, to our panelists, list of panelists today, Tom Tao. I've worked with Tom for many years. Um, he is a data analytics implementation manager. Um, so Tom will be bringing some great technical insights when it comes to Google Analytics for to the conversation today. And of course, I'm super excited uh, about uh, having our extra special guest on with us today. Brian, thank you for joining and welcome. It is so good to be here. We have a lot to share. This is a high value hour. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with Brian, which I'm sure you are, um, he's an automotive consultant. He's a founder of PCG Digital and also uh, Brian Pesh Enterprises. He's also a motivator and a well-recognized, uh, not just face, but voice um, in the automotive industry in all of North America. Um, so we thought it would be a very, um, actually great addition to the conversation today because Brian kicked off a really cool initiative that we'll cover more around the details in the upcoming session. So um, I'll give you a quick run through of the agenda. We have a ton uh, to squeeze into the hour. Uh, so we're trying to make sure that we get through everything. We'll leave Q&A to the end. So as you have questions popping up in your head, um, as we cover different details, please, please pop them in the Q&A um, and we'll try and answer them after the presentations. We're going to start the conversation today with Brian, um, who will give us an overview about the Automotive Standards Council. I believe many of our dealers have heard of it, but for, uh, for those who have not, we'll give you an overview of how it came to be. Um, this is Brian's uh, brainchild and what kind of effort uh, and initiative has gone into the involving 80 um, vendors from our industry and other experts. Then Ivan, as always, is going to run us through some marketing KPIs and best practices. Um, and then Tom uh, will get a bit more technical on us. So we'll do a comparison of Universal Analytics uh, with Google Analytics 4, and we'll talk about implementation, tagging, cross-platform tracking. Um, so uh, there's lot, tons of information. We wanna make sure you get it all. So we will send you a recording of this session and also the deck um, afterwards. And also uh, we'll be able to share with you at the end of our session, the um, Automotive uh, Standards Council specifications and that we're going to be talking about. So we thought because uh, our audience is so wide from marketing expert to sales managers, we'll start, just spend a minute, a quick history lesson for us on Google Analytics. Uh, with Tom, and then we'll jump right into it. Thanks, Mary. <clears throat> so in, uh, in 2000, early 2000, Google bought a startup company called Urchin and renamed its flagship web analytic tool called Google Analytics. And it offered to essentially everybody for free with the hope of to, to help its advertising business. So in, that's how it started in 2005. In, 2000, uh, in 2012, it has the most recent upgrade, the switch from the classic Google, Google Analytics to Universal Analytics. So over the past 10 years, so uh, it is getting very popular. It is now Google Analytics is powering over 60% of the world's web sign up. And in 2020, 2020 Google launched its um, Apps Plus Web uh, Analytics platform. Later, it was renamed to GA4. It was built on a completely new platform called uh, Firebase Analytics. So it starts from the app side. So earlier this year, Google made an announcement that by July 2023, which is seven months from now, uh, Universal Analytics will not be able to process any new hits. So a key update here, 
is all the previous upgrade has been backward compatible, but not for GA4. So what means is it will not be able to carry forward all the historic data. So that's why it is crucial important for you to really to get on board with GA4 as soon as possible. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so now we move into the Automotive Standards Council with Brian Pash, Claris. Thank you. Yeah, just for quick context, um, Ivan I, and I had the opportunity to attend Brian's Modern Retailing Conference a couple of weeks ago in Palm Beach, which, which was awesome. Uh, tons of workshops, uh, panels and keynote speakers um, sharing everything that is on trend in the automotive industry. And Ivan, you had the opportunity uh, to attend uh, Google and Explore workshops. Yeah, and it was great, you know, the way, uh, Brian, you united a lot of big agencies and big dealer groups, and we're all on the same page. We're all on the same page. We all want to do the same level of playing field, and I think it's a great initiative, and I was very excited to work with everybody there uh, a couple of weeks back, and of course, even the previous months on the weekly calls and things like this. Yeah, so just for quick context for those who are not familiar with it, uh, Brian, would you mind just sharing uh, a bit more information about how it came to be? When did you decide to bring everyone together to create these standards across our industry? Sure, uh, in order to explain the benefits of, of what the council is achieving, um, let's use something that most Canadians would know, uh, the Hudson Bay department stores. Could you imagine if uh, each Hudson Bay department store was working on their own point of sale? You know, they named products uh, one way in one store, products differently in another. They, they had uh, item numbers uh, that were different. And then imagine trying to do a roll-up report at the end of the month on what sold and what didn't sell. Effectively, that's exactly what has happened historically with uh, automotive dealer groups. You know, they have a website provider, let's just say A, and they decided to name the clicks and track things one way. And then they have another website provider B and they've done it differently. And, and so at the end of the month, if a marketing manager wanted to do a roll-up report, it was really like needing Rosetta Stone to try to understand what a dealer.com or a dealer inspire or a <clears throat> dealer e-process or an auto trader, or wh whatever website platform was being used. So the goal of council was to say, what if, what if we could all use the same event names? Uh, every click, swipe, or hover that goes on a website, a digital retailing tool, a merchandising tool, a chat or texting tool, what if we all got together and named everything the same way so that dealer groups could do roll-up reports, agencies could create better marketing uh, inputs and conversion optimization. So in uh, May of this year, not too long ago, I started reaching out to the largest tech companies and I said, well, how's your GA4 development going? And what I found out is most people were saying, well, we're in the middle of that right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, would you consider um, standardizing events? And the more I talked to more and more companies, People were like, wow, if we were able to standardize events, it would save everyone a lot of time and money. So that's the goal. The goal was to create a single standard for every click, hover, swipe action on a dealer website or the tools that sit on the website. And the good news is we have now close to almost 100 companies and dealer groups that have committed to support the specification. And that specification just got released on November 14th. Which is awesome. Yes, yeah, so I think that leads me to the next question. So uh, the standardization doesn't just benefit deals and dealer groups and OEMs, but also us vendors as well across the industry. Yeah, I think the, the biggest uh, for dealer groups, the benefits are you could really uh, have one standard data studio template and apply it to any website platform or digital retailing tool. Um, for OEMs, their field training teams now can walk into a dealership and have a more easier, meaningful conversation with the dealers because um, the events and the goals will be set up the same. And for the vendors, 
Uh, for website companies, this could be hundreds of thousands of dollars of save time and support costs. And for agencies, this is uh, the first time that it would be easy to separate conversions for sales service parts, both phone calls, chats, text, lead forms, so that we can optimize campaigns based on the goal of that campaign. Which we'll dig into a little bit uh, later. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, we'll get deeper into that. So the question is that how do we roll these out? Like it's a huge initiative and effort to put it together, but just to make sure that we get it in the hands of everyone uh, and everyone follows these standards. Yes, so this has been a a passion project for sure. Uh, On November 14th, we released the spec. Now we froze the spec uh, a few weeks earlier. Uh, In the U.S., we have very broad support. In Canada, a few companies pioneering like yourselves um, have have raised their hand and say, we want to support these specs in Canada. Uh, In the U.S., every major website platform provider has committed to rolling out the events in the spec by January 1st, which is important because that means that starting in January dealers and dealer groups would have very detailed consumer engagement data, all standardized. Um, We will be posting a list on the standards website, which we'll share with you later on the compliance dates, when the companies plan to um, support the spec. Many of them are trying to do it before the end of the year. And the great news for everyone, agencies, vendors, OEMs, Uh, consultants, we're going to give you the links later in the webinar to get a copy of the specification, which is like a book, and also some of the tech resources that the Standards Committee. Yeah, look at that. That that actually is a book. Where's your sticker? (laughs) I got a sticker too. Look at this. Come on. Yeah, yeah, you got your membership. Got it. Yeah, so um, actually we were uh, talking about it earlier. So if there are any vendors on the call who are still interested and want to become a founding member, it's not too late. No, it's not. And um, what we're really excited about is that um, any of the tech companies that join now, they really can hit the ground running. This specification, and it's not meant to be reading, but all of the event names in the spec start with ASE for Automotive Standards Council. There's about 35 specific events. And this document, which everyone will get, explains the benefits of each event and where it's used. And I see a question coming in, you know, where do we get training regarding the standardized process? So if you're a vendor, okay, you can join the council and we have um, uh, regular meetings to get you up to speed on how to implement the spec. If you're a dealer, um, you can download the specification and work with your vendor provider. The greatest piece of this is every vendor who has seen the spec and said, wow, this is amazing. This is something we can get behind. And then we will uh, make updates probably on a quarterly basis in 2023, because as more companies join, they're going to have additional maybe products or services that we didn't think of. Exactly. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So just to kind of like summarize to you again, what the standard um, council is about, it's your events are going to be uniform from vendor to vendor. Uh, The definition of conversion will be standardized. So Ivan will uh, cover the details on that. What does it look like when you've got conversion set up incorrectly or correctly? So we'll make sure that these conversions are standardized and you will have a single GA4 property managed by dealers with the data from all vendors in one place. So it'd be really easy to do comparison and understand real performance. Yeah. And, you know, um, that the really the, the main point is level the playing field. Right. Um, we stand behind our campaigns and things like this. And so should everybody. And so should dealers have the exact same playing field for everybody across the board. All right. Yeah, I think it cues me to introduce Keep myself your right in. Yeah, digital myself. marketing and website performance metrics. Ivan. 
Thank you. Yes, of course. So, um, you know, I like essay writing, so I like to outline everything before I talk to it. But here's what I'll go over. It's from UA to GA4. Where are my common metrics now? So a lot of you have, uh, you know, used to look up source medium, um, bounce rate, but not it's not really bounce rate anymore. So there's new metrics now. We'll go over those. Driving insights, um, we'll have, uh, you know, look into demographics and interest reports and alerts, and then of J4 is better attribution. So how is that better attribution? We'll go into conversion paths and engaged views. Uh, just before we start, though, there are some definitions, um, you know, about J4 that's a little bit different. So J4 is event-based as opposed to page view-based. Um, and you can see here, we use engagement right now and not bounce rate as a main key KPI. Forget about bounce rate now. What's engaged sessions? Or what's what makes up engagement right now? And you can see on the right hand side, engaged sessions include a visit that lasts longer than ten seconds, contains more than one page view, and contains at least one conversions event. Now, Claris traffic um, used a lot of VDP campaigns straight to the mm -hmm. vehicle, and you could actually get a scenario in UA where somebody clicked on the car that they wanted, looked at photos, watched the video stayed there 10 minutes, wrote the whole GM, the description that the GM does, uh, and then submitted a form and that would be counted as a bounce. Can you mm -hmm. believe that? And so then you would, you would go away from that campaign because you think it's a high bounce yeah, it rate. Was, that's what. So now this fixes that because that would be a highly engaged um, event, uh, 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 visit. Yeah. And second. And Ivan, yeah. let me just make a point. Mm -hmm. about, about seven years ago, I published a specification uh, listing events that should be on dealer websites. They, they were named a little differently. They started with CPE. Mm -hmm. And if some dealers see events in their uh, analytics, their universal analytics, CPE, that was the project I did about seven years ago. The problem was a lot of these events were being fired in the tag manager container, which wasn't very stable. Um, so if somebody corrupted the tag manager container, these events would stop. One of the cool things about the spec is that the website companies, the digital retailing tool companies, for the most part, will be firing these events. When I say it's a click, it's a hover or a swipe directly from their code. And this is super important so that the, the events are not likely to disappear. There will be more, you said, level the playing field, more stability. And then for the first time, you'll be able to see when somebody clicked on an ad and came to your website, did they do the things that I value? And this is the cool thing. So everything they could do on that website in the new ASC spec is outlined. So this is a breakthrough, not just because it's event-based, but we believe that the events will be more stable. Yeah, and, and that leads to What's working and what's not working, uh, a simplified view. Right. Exactly. And by channel, we'll see the engagement rates of some of the different channels a little bit in shortly. And that really is telling as to what people are doing and how, what you want them to do. Uh, the second portion is looking at engagements rather than page views. So UA metrics being removed, pages per session and average session duration. Those are, or those are pretty much gone. And now we're talking about engaged sessions. So how much they're engaging and average engagement time. All right, so now for the marketers uh, in the room, finding the co common metric source medium. Everybody was looking for source medium before. Um, it's really an indication of your uh, advertising marketing efforts. Uh, the way you get to it is you go into reports under traffic acquisition, and then you get this screen, but first you gotta click uh, at the top there. There's some drop downs of source medium campaign and things like this. So here's where you get the new source medium report. And you can see here, um, the metrics are a bit different. Now we're talking engaged sessions per user, events per session, engagement rate, and event count. So these are a lot different. You can see on the left-hand side as well, the source mediums, you can see um, your cost per click campaigns there. There's some traffic, uh, uh, cost per click on social. You can see some third-party marketplace, Bing is there. Um, and then of course, here's in this specific dealership, there's uh, one of our TikTok campaigns running as well. So. Um, you can see it's a lot different. Um, you're looking at engagements now. And, you and know, you what's go, interesting. Yeah, I'm just Chris. thinking that you can go down to the campaign level. So not just looking at it. By the yeah, way. so something that a lot of agencies might have done is, hey, look, Google CPC is doing great. And that's pretty much where they left it. So that's yeah. where we go to the second portion, right? You can go all the way to the campaign level. So it's very important to see what campaigns perform. In this specific example here, notice how the dealership brand name ranks very high. So 
in this case, you know, some agencies would say, hey, listen, we, uh, we got you a bunch of leads and, and conversions and all they really did was switch everything to branding. So that's, that's something that now you can catch. Um, you can double check. I always say spot check what your agency is doing. We do it on our end. You know, we would never do something like this, but like just to make sure, hey, if this is the initiative you want, then this is what it brings. That's what the branding brings. When if you look at, uh, you know, position six and eight, and nine, these are now inventory campaigns. And then you want to see how the, the conversions and, and the engagement is on these specific campaigns within Google CPC or whatever the source medium was. Something I want to mark, uh, show here on the right hand side, check out those conversions, Claris. 5,000 conversions, 1,200 conversions. Obviously, that's not correct. There's no way that would happen. I'm going to talk about a little bit later how you make sure to mark the correct conversions, the ones Brian talked about, and even not only the real conversions as in submission forms and chats, but by profit center as well. Yeah, that's going to be the big breakthrough for all the agencies uh, and dealers on today's webinar and those who are watching uh, later is that most agencies did not have an easy way to differentiate phone calls by department, sales service parts, lead forms by department, chats and texts by department. In the new specification, um, the form submission event, the roll up event is all form submissions, but we have sub events for sales service and parts. Same thing with messaging. Um, and now for the first time, I could look at that brand campaign and say, you know, how many conversions did I get for sales, service, and parts? And you'll find out when you buy your dealership name, most like 80 plus percent of those conversions are for service, <clears throat> which is fine, except um, maybe service should be paying for that <laughs> campaign, uh, not out of the variable ops budget. But this is some of the breakthroughs we'll have with the new GA4 platform. 100%, and you say 80%, Brian, I swear, I, when I did my research, I thought it was more or 90%. Yep. Um, but as long as you know, you're know you aware that that's what you wanna do, mm -hmm. then that's that's positive, right? Um, and in this specific example here, this dealership is a very unique dealership brand name. So you know, bidding on that would not probably be the best strategy for them. Uh, having said the <clears throat> source medium and campaign, that means UTM tagging is very important in GA4. So the UTM tagging tool, what is it? There it is here. There's a link there at the bottom of it. It's your standard UTM tagging tool. Not sure if, uh, obviously some marketers have been using this for years. There is a new toggle at the top that goes to GA4. Make sure you're uh, putting in the correct, uh, your, your website URL you wanna go to, and then your source, your medium, and then your campaign name. And that way you'll get right really granular into which specific uh, profit center campaigns within Google CPC, within Facebook social that you really wanna focus on. We did some engagement rate observations by channel, and I have them here on this on this screen. Now these aren't benchmarks, okay? So these are just observations. We took about twenty stores and looked at the best performing ones. And before, when you used to look at bounce rate, you used to say a campaign that had maybe eighty percent, ninety percent bounce rate bounce rate was bad. I don't want to you know run that campaign anymore. Well, now it's not like that. It's the inverse. Yeah. So now it's like like you know a school where the higher your percentage is, the better. Okay. Some interesting observations uh, we've made is uh, organic social, if you see there at 84% engagement rate, that's a hit or miss. I saw some dealerships there at 55, 60% engagement rate on organic social, and the other ones were at 98%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's like the median of it. You can really see whether or not your posting on social is actually working yeah. mm -hmm. using the engagement rate. Yeah, and like you said, these are not benchmark, it's just observation. Something we've seen, yeah, something we've seen. These are the top kind of stores. 20, we did 20 stores, yeah. but the really interesting one on this screen. Vehicle ads. ads. That's <laughs> right, vehicle ads. We saw paid shopping campaigns across the entire spectrum hitting at 98, 99%, mm -hmm. 97% on the average. And that's because these are lower market, lower funnel shoppers. They've already, you can only see a Google shopping yeah. ad if you've already been in the, sort of been you've around. done your research and you you're you're lower in the funnel you're sure. lower funnel so now you see paid shopping so this justifies vehicle ad spend and by all means if you're not on vehicle ads i highly suggest it if not please reach out to us we'll get you on yeah we Great actually did a session on it a couple of months ago so you can find a recording on our website yeah we yeah on, on our youtube and on auto syncs youtube we do have a, a webinar on vehicle ads from a few months ago with amar sony who's on the call <laughs> um 
Cool. So into insights and recommendations, you know, Google has a lot of um, great data that they have on your users um, and they, you know, include it. Um, so you can do a lot of lookalike modeling in uh, GA4. And so now I'm going to go into the demographics report, um, which you find under reports, demographics and demographics details. Then when you get the subheading there and it is set, you can see there used to be like city language age. And gender, but now they have interests, which is really neat. They have interests. So in this specific case here, you see this specific dealership actually gets a lot of interest from Indian alternative rock fans, 98% engagement rate. So what I would say is um, market your dealership to the most highly engaged groups of users who interact with your content the most, formalize the language, the visuals, the vehicle segments that would attract that kind of interest group. Uh, and you'd want to do that over something like running enthusiasts for the specific dealership, they don't engage as much. Maybe because, maybe because they're running and they're looking on their phone and they can't click too many things. I don't know, no. Um, one thing though, uh, just to note, is if you want that engagement, the, the, uh, those signals to be on, you have to turn on Google signals, okay? So uh, the way you do that is you go to admin, you'll, have, you'll find this Google signals data collection there. It says get started. Um, and then you activate Google signals. So. You can see here, you'll get cross device capabilities, more insights, like you saw the interest group, um, the interest there. So first thing you gotta do is turn on Google Signals. There is a caveat though, and Tom Tao was quick to point out the caveat, Tom. No, I think you covered pretty well. It's like really, when you have a small amount of traffic, just uh, be aware there's a downside because <clears throat> uh, when you turn it on, in order to protect user privacy, um, uh, Google uh, Google has limited the, the, the way you can break down the event report. Um, so if if you have you need to, the, the the Google signal and you have a low traffic site, we suggest that you switch back to the device only reporting. So that's also another the other setting in GA4. So just be aware there's a there's some 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 caveat to that with with small traffic. Yeah, and by the way, Google signals is GDPR compliant because users have opted in. That's where they get the data from from opted in users. Next, on the home page, they have uh, insights and recommendations here at the bottom of the page. Some of them will be very interesting. In this specific case, the dealership doesn't run a lot of paid or any, any other sort of unique campaign, so there's not a lot to go on. Google Organic driving the most conversions, but at the same time, it does provide some great insights. This is at the bottom of the home page, but also you want to create your own custom insights, okay? So you can go to the home page. Um, again, in the insights and recommendations section, there's a view all insights tab. Click that, and in this case, um, you want to set up a, some type of custom insight, like an anomaly in daily conversions. So this is a way to keep your agencies in check. Uh, if your conversions drop be be below a certain threshold, you might get an email. Okay, there could be a lot of things going on at the agency, or even within your own marketing team, pacing issues, ad violations. Maybe there a, a CTA broke. So it's important for you to set this up. So that when conversions come in and there's an anomaly, there's an anomaly in a week or even daily, you can do it frequency as daily. It emails you right away and say, hey, there's something going on with your conversions, not happening as frequent or as or, or on average as they used to. And you can give yeah, us a call. And Ivan, that's uh, similar to the functionality of the Google alerts that were in Universal Analytics. You could set certain uh, alerts based on uh, the criteria of the goals you set up. So. You know, if a conversion goal was zero for a day or two, and this is very important uh, to make sure that uh, the activity that you're expecting on the website on a consistent basis, because you're advertising, doesn't drop off. And, you know, maybe you ran out of budget seven days before the end of the month. Yeah. Um, you probably might know that even before your agency. So that's why these are really good to know. Yeah. True, and at traffic, we do have all of these throughout the month. We have all of these signals, making sure that uh, you get all of your marketing ROI that you, you, you gave to us. All right, so uh, of course, one of the reasons we do this for GA4, one of the reasons we went to GA4 is better attribution. Uh, and so now here's a cool report um, that didn't exist before, and it's conversion paths. How you get to it, advertising on the left-hand side, scroll down to conversion pass, and now you have first click attribution and last click attribution. So now some campaigns that you run on, let's say video, or in this specific example for this dealership, paid shopping and display, which got the first click, but by the time the last click uh, came around, they now get uh, credit for it. 
And that's something that didn't happen before. So, you know, when uh, usually in, in our analytics, you only see the last click. And so now you can uh, justify the reasons why you're doing some of these other, uh, you know, being on some of these other channels. Um, so, cause on the performance review, really what you're looking at is the last click attribution, but now you can go on first click. And by the way, you can um, go by source medium and campaign again. So you can get really granular on wh what campaigns are being clicked first. Uh, and that journey that ends up to that last click is all, it all benefits to each other and you can justify your, your marketing spend to your GMs or whoever you're reporting it to. Yeah, really see what's working and what's not. Exactly. Continuing with conversions, as we talked uh, earlier with Brian, you uh, can actually configure. So we saw the Claris, we saw the 4,000, 6,000 conversions. Well, it's because they have a setup like this, okay? An yeah. incorrect setup. Um, which is, you can see here, they're counting VDP views over 30 seconds as a conversion. The interesting thing about GA4 is that you can now toggle conversions on and off. And in this case, this dealership's got it all wrong. They're, everything is a conversion when they should really be events and then real conversions mm -hmm. should be conversions. Um, and this is the correct way to configure, or at least more correct, where we're actually, oh, and by the way, it's in the configure section. Uh, on the left hand side and then you go into conversions and then you'll be able to edit it in this case here you see on the right hand side we've actually marked as conversions things that are conversions and the ones that aren't conversions are not and as we spoke about earlier the asc uh, uh, chat submission service is marked as a conversion but it's also marked as service so now you can have service conversions you know which campaigns are, are, are converting on service. And then you see two from the bottom, which ones are, commit, are, 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 are sales conversions. So now you wanna ask yourself, what are the goals of your campaigns and are they hitting the profit center that you wanted to, to, to finish off with? And also, and very important is that you're the native AIs on Google, Facebook, YouTube, and these others can follow the signals for a sales submission and not follow the signals of a service submission. Yeah, so, I mean, so it's a subtle point, but I don't think most dealers understood. I think two years ago now, I, I published some groundbreaking research and dealers can download it at uh, brianpesh.com. And what I found is that most dealers just had a goal set up form submission and click the call. And they were using these goals to optimize their campaigns, not thinking that those calls or forms could be very skewed to one department or another. So the specification as your screen has shown um, is we have chat and text, conversion, sales, serve, and part. We have form submission, sales, service, and parts. We have phone calls, sales, service, and parts. So that for the first time, you could actually see what the campaign is producing and use the signals to get more of those good things. And to your point, um, dealers may be asking, hey, Brian, how do I get these ASC events to show up, okay? And this is very simple. You just need to talk to your website provider, your chat provider, your trade tool provider, your digital retailing tool provider, and just say, hey, um, are you supporting the ASC spec? They will start to send the events. And then all you need to do is make sure that they're set up properly that according to the specifications, the events that should be conversions and the other ones that should be turned off. Yeah, and um, Tom will go a little bit deeper as well into uh, each, each sort of uh, provider has to provide their own events, which is pretty cool now as well, that each one is responsible for their own tracking. Finally, engage view conversions here. This is one of my favorites, Claris, for sure. Uh, you know, I always, there's a power to YouTube uh, when you watch a video and then you go on to organic and do a search before you couldn't get a conversion out of the video or the video didn't convert or didn't, didn't uh, you know, help, but engage view conversions validates your video marketing. And now what is an engage view conversion? It's something, it's when someone watches a YouTube video for at least 10 seconds and then converts on your website within three days of viewing that video, you'll actually get an engage view conversion on the video, which would validate your video marketing. Uh, one thing, and I, I'm really excited about that one, and I highly, I highly suggest you turn it on. And of course, in order to turn it on, you have to link your Google Ads account. 
And then you have to activate Google signals, what I had mentioned earlier, in order for this to start working. But by all means, now, I believe more than ever before with the proliferation of video, YouTube will become even more sort of beneficial. And you'll see the real power of it. For sure. All right, switching gears. Um, yeah, switching gears. Um, Tom, we're going to get a little bit more technical. So let's look at overview differences and similarities between Universal Analytics and Google Analytics 4 and look under the hood mm -hmm. as well as you call it. OK, thanks, Ivan. Thanks, Cyrus. So we're going to talk start by talking about um, the data model. So data model is how essentially the data is being organized inside of Google Analytics platform. I'd like to use a automotive analogy here. So Google Analytics, by switching to Google Analytics 4, Google Analytics is switching from a legacy internal combustion engine to an electric car engine. So uh, the electric car engine is much more simplified and also also more, most, uh, more modern. So we call it event-driven model. I'm getting a little bit more into detail on how it works. So on the left-hand side, you can see that's the legacy Google Universal Google Analytics. It was all hit based. You can see the green mark. It was all hit. A page view is a hit. In commerce, it's a hit. It was also the custom event is a hit. They were they were all dated back in early 2000, as I mentioned previously, when everything on the website was a hit. So on top of each hit, it become a session layer. So session was used can be used interchangeably as a visit. And all those sessions will be rolling up to the user. User was also being used interchangeably as a unique visitor. So on GE4, everything now becomes a event. As you can see on the green, um, these are all the, the fundamental of the automotive console standard is defined how those events want to be tracked. So by removing the session layer and making it all event-driven data model has made Google Analytics a lot more modern. As I say modern, because they're also competitors for Google Analytics, like Adobe Analytics, like Ampl Amplitude. Those are all um, event-driven. And then the simplified data model also make it easier for people to understand. So we've gone like we've gone from vertical or horizontal when it comes exactly. to- Exactly. Great point. Thanks, Clarice. Um, so with that being said, the first thing uh, you are likely to do once you have a Google Analytics for uh, property set up is to compare how many, how many users, how many sessions, and how many pages you, you're going to have on Google Analytics for any universal analytics, because there will be a period. Um, um, we recommend to do a dual tagging, which you are not deprecating your existing universal analytics, but you set up your Google Analytics for. And you want to know that what is the acceptance level between the two. Mm -hmm. So from our internal project we run, we got a variance between 5% to 15%. And it can get both in both ways. And a couple of weeks ago, we got a chance to go to an internal Google's training. And a product manager for Google Analytics 4 told us that it can be up to a 30% gap. So you might wonder why there's a 30%. So that's actually the, the change in data model is a fundamental uh, reason driving the, the gap. And we recommend the, really the key, key points to understand the, the consistency, not looking at the absolute number. That's one of the other reasons why we recommend you to take action as soon as possible. To get some historical data and really understand uh, the difference between one versus Absolutely, one. absolutely. Thanks, Maris. And the second thing I would like to talk about is uh, reporting. So Ivan has already addressed a lot of use case scenario for reporting. So let us talk about a little bit more on the platform level changes. So on the left-hand side in Universal Analytics, the majority of the user currently using Universal Analytics are using their standard report because the standard report is very powerful, very easy to use. You can create and apply segment, slice and dice the data using the trend line as well as secondary dimension. In Google Analytics 4, you still have the standard report, but it was dramatically simplified. So you might find it a little bit difficult to you at, at the beginning because the, the UI has changed a lot. However, it also introduced two new features that is directly related to reporting. 
Uh, the first one is on the uh, right hand side, you can see that it's called Explore. So it, it sits right beneath uh, the reporting. Uh, it is essentially, if you are familiar with Excel, uh, you probably understand the, the, the pivot table concept. It's essentially a giant pivot table sitting on top of the data set in Google Analytics 4. Uh, so using that Explore function, you can simply drag and pull the dimensions and metrics and send those uh, into the Explore and perform your own analysis. Or you can simply use a template, which is provided by Google Analytics, to analyze the final completion on form submission, or you can do path analysis to understand where is exactly your site user navigate the site and dropping off. So in our opinion, it is a very interesting new feature, a good, very good complement to the uh, the limit, uh, the li somewhat limited standard report in GA4. And the other one, which is the one I like to spend a little bit more time on, is called the Google, the BigQuery connection. Mm -hmm. So you might want to, like BigQuery connection sounds a little bit more technical. So what does it really mean? So BigQuery is actually a, a sub product for Google Cloud Platform called Google GCP. So it's essentially a cloud database offered by, offered by also offer, offered by Google. And then what's cool about it is you can literally explore all the raw data in Google Analytics 4 to this BigQuery connection. And then so a, a typical use case uh, we are hearing from the dealership customer is um, they believe um, they are only all the, the, the data that the user come into their website, which definitely so. And then, but they had a hard time when, they, for example, they were switching vendor and then they want to switch Google Analytics uh, property, they had a hard time actually download the data because Google Analytics, Universal Analytics does not offer that feature. But using Google, the BigQuery connection, every single raw hit without being processed can be exported into this Google uh, BigQuery connection, uh, BigQuery cloud database. And for like advanced data group um, customer, you can actually join the, the table in BigQuery with your own, say, CRM data to do advanced attribution. Uh, so those all become a possibility. Um, and before that, it was it was just not possible. Some major, major reporting. Um, so um, if, for those who just are just your, your, want your regular data studio report or something like that, we're definitely going to have at the end of the call to share the uh, Automotive Standards Council Looker Studio report in full. Uh, and you can download a copy yourself so you can have that data because I think a lot of people on the call, well, I think there's some that'll do BigQuery, but there's a lot on the call who definitely would kind of want the uh, data studio-ish type of report. But we have both here. That's why Tom and I are both here to represent. Um, so here we talk about Tom GA4's modeling to make up the loss conversion in consent mode. This is very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is more like a, a future proofing uh, feature. Because right now in Canada, there's no like official law uh, set up in place that uh, website uh, uh, website vendor uh, need to uh, give consent. Uh, but in Europe, it's already a law passed, and um, what it means is every single web uh, website visitor will need to mandatory give consent whether the website can track my behavior or not. Um, so what happened in, in if when the when the site uh, website users say no, which is in our research is about thirty to fifty percent of the total user, how do we see those conversions? That's what the model conversions come in. So Google Analytics Four has a built-in feature that enable its machine learning algorithm to model all those uh, like site user behavior and come up with a percentage of the conversion that actually happened. And so in that case, you can use those model conversion to send it to your Google Ads and optimize your Google Ads spending instead of going completely blank. Again, that's a more future-proof feature. It's probably not going to be hit by this in 2023, but we believe that's, that's a trend. It will come, yeah. It will come, yeah, it will yeah. come. All right. So, um, so in summary, there are three main uh, differences we kind of already cover, different data model, the explore report and BigQuery connection, and the privacy and modeling, but still a lot of core functionality remains the same. So uh, Google Analytics 4 will still be able to integrate 
with other Google products like Google Ads. And the website, insta website installation, which you put the Google tracking snippet on the back end of the website are staying in state. So you can still reuse the, those uh, previous, uh, uh, previous methods uh, that help you to set up Google Analytics. And Tom, for the T-Advantage customers um, on the uh, call today, when is are we ready for GA4 with the ASC spec? Yeah, so uh, if you are tracking that by yourself, it's actually already available. So we can use the existing connector. You can just contact your um, online strategy consultant. So we can get the, your own GA4 up and running. Um, and then for um, like the, the ones that we set up for you um, for ASC compliant, uh, we do expect that to have it uh, in early 2023. Very nice. Okay. All right. Uh, and yeah, so next, let's, um, let me talk, talk to you about uh, briefly how to set up your Google Analytics for up and running. Um, so we have a kind of somewhat a, a, a couple of step approach. So always uh, the first uh, step is always start with the business question and track only what, only, um, only what matters. That's actually one of the principle of digital analytics. Um, always have the metrics directly speak to your business objectives. So it is tempting to you know, track literally everything because you can, but it's kind of a rabbit hole because the cost of maintaining the high quality data is extremely high. And we suggest to use this opportunity for Google Analytics for migration as a way to clean your house. So to remove those events doesn't matter, no longer matter, and then um, only migrate and set up the new one like the, the automotive console standard event as, as a new event moving forward. And Tom, and, let mm -hmm. me just make a, a general thought. Um, I personally don't recommend, you know, doing this importing of events from, you know, GA3 uh, into GA4. Uh, it's a lot of junk and noise. Yeah. And that's why all the ASC events start with ASC, so they'll all sort alphabetically. So the ASC spec is not to limit other events because there's always something that needs to be added. The idea here is that the vendors should find almost 99% of everything that needs to be tracked in the ASC events. So if you start seeing lots of other events, then these are companies that are not following the ASC specification and you have to get them on board because otherwise you're going to continue the problem of when you switch vendors, all your reports break mm -hmm. and we can't minimize the cost of that. So in an ideal scenario, if your website provider, your marketing providers, your merchandising communication providers are all supporting specification, then most of your events will be ASC, with the exception of a few events that may be very unique to a specific platform that we didn't think about. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I absolutely agree. Uh, Google actually offered that there's a, a migration tool, which we, we don't recommend, even though they, they put it on a website, because it, it, you know, to, to Brian's point, you know, it can carry a lot of junk and a lot of, you know, unused uh, data moving forward. Um, so thanks for calling up. Um, yeah, and so, also, uh, and, and also, just to add, the specs that that every event that was that Brian's talking about, it was I don't want to say debated, but it was discussed amongst many. It was it was a kind of a group decision of w what we all think counts and doesn't count, and all these kinds of things. So it was definitely absolutely. teamwork, and across you know, over, like Brian said, over about a hundred con contribute contributees, not that's yeah. word, but contributors um, to the uh, to, to the spec. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, the configuration of Google Analytics 4 is critical because that's actually the step that kind of gateway your data quality, um, particularly for those, for example, all those automotive console standard events, you will need to make sure that those uh, custom dimension, which is a subset of all the event parameters are being set up on the configuration. So you can then break down the report in whatever the native reporting or data studio. Uh, and again, once you have everything ready, you can leverage different kind of reporting, uh, the native native uh, report, Explorer, as well as uh, Lucas Studio. Um, yeah, and uh, stick around at the end. We're going to give that link to you to download your own Lucas Studio report that's ASC compliant. Thank you. Yeah, and then lastly, for all of things, key advantage website customer, we do expect to launch it in Q1 2023. 
Um, here is actually a, a example of how the automotive console standard event uh, are covering the major touch point on a core page, which is an SRP in this case. Um, we can have as many as 13 different events um, covering all the major touch points on the website. So all of the engagement are covered on those events. Uh, so uh, that's one of the key value of having the ASE in place. Good coverage. And, and Tom, while we have that slide up, one of the cool things that dealers didn't have consistency with is, you know, which CTA buttons are getting the most clicks, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the website provider, uh, maybe they tagged the buttons, maybe they didn't. In the new specification, every CTA button will fire the ASC CTA interaction event, meaning that's the start of a CTA. The cool thing is, is then you can see how many conversions you got from that CTA. So if you know how many times the button was clicked, let's just say it's 100, and you got 10 conversions, you would know that the form completion rate is 10%. You have to ask yourself, if it's that low, is there friction? You know, so the, the specification is going to allow website developers, dealers, software providers, uh, a more collaborative discussion with their clients on which workflows are working and where there's opportunities for improved conversion. Absolutely. Thanks, Brian. And next, we're going to talk about um, a little bit more advanced features because some of you might be using uh, multiple domains. An right? example is um, you have a digital retail tool um, and then you need to basically understand how the user are moving between your website and your digital retail solution. So a key concept we need to understand is uh, a subdomain and a cross domain. So I'll give you an example here. If your website domain is, is um, www.dealerwebsite.com, a subdomain means majority of the part is the same, just added a, 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 few, a few digits on the, on the top. Uh, so in that case, we call it subdomain. Uh, you don't need to do anything. You just need to make sure that the, the Google Analytics measurement ID is being placed on both the digital retail solution as well as the you know, dealership website. So in that case, everything will be tracked automatically. Uh, but more, more commonly, we will see that is uh, if you're, there are some um, OEM guideline which you are being given a, a, a domain which is different than your dealership domain. So in that case, um, you will need to configure a cross-domain tracking in Google Analytics 4. So GA4 has made it easier to setting up because previously in Universal Analytics, you have to set up in Google Tag Manager. It was no longer the case. So it was a setting, as I share here, you can just add in the domain into the setting and everything will be tracked automatically. So everything's trackable. Third parties are trackable. DR is trackable. Everything's trackable. No more, oh, we don't know what happened after yeah. the click. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. Okay, thank you. Um, then we have a couple of you know uh, slides to share. The first one was really no, this um, one's big. A really uh, a simple learn step. from our uh, mistakes, right? <laughs> yes, yes. That's actually one of the things we learned when we we're doing that uh, in the last last couple of months. Is um, when you set up a Google Analytics for the default setting for event look back is only two months. So what the two months is only applied to the Explorer report, not applying to the standard report. Um, the reason we believe the two months, it was really a, a, a cost implication on Google end. I don't want everybody to set up automatically to have 14 months, uh, but we do need, uh, suggest you to change immediately. Just click, click of a button, but that will enable you to run much more deeper analysis on, um, on Explorer. That's yeah. the first thing. And then um, next slide, uh, we have a couple of you know, materials for, um, um, for you. Like we have it's no affiliation to that. It was just myself and my team. We went through those uh, trainings and books. We found them quite useful and I'm happy to share that and you know, have the slides. And, and also I know that Brian also had uh, automotive console center training, uh, which uh, a couple of session and there's one in May. I think the next slide. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yes, so Brian, you wanna talk about it? Yeah, so I, I wanna encourage everyone on the webinar, and I know we have over 200 people that have uh, 
you know, logged in live, which is a fantastic accomplishment to the AutoSync team. So congratulations. Uh, people love to learn from you. Um, there's a link there and I would encourage you to download the PDF of the current spec, but by also filling in your name, when the new revisions happen, you will automatically get the revision. So yes, you can ask your friend to send you the PDF, but we don't know who you are, right? So the, this is not for marketing emails. It just would be, I want the 1.0 spec. And if when it goes to 1.1 or 1.2, please keep me in the loop. Also on the website will be separate signups for webinars and live training. And we hope to do a live training in Canada relatively soon. But actually we have a poll, Brian, okay. if we want to figure out the interest. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, the, the potential of GA4 with the ASC spec specification is awesome. And so the question was, as I was talking with Yvonne and Claris and Tom, you know, uh, should we do a day of training for the followers of AutoSync um, and uh, the clients and, and do a hands-on where you could bring your laptop in and, and uh, really inspect what is set up in your analytics. So uh, mm -hmm. this would be good to see what that poll has to say. Yeah, I'll give it another 30 seconds. So right now, 71% of you would be interested in it. So I think Brian would definitely uh, have, have get something like set up. Great. And then as, as e e even mentioned in May in uh, Austin, Texas, we'll have the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference, which is specific to automotive. And there we should be having on display um, more Looker Studio reports, more case studies of how dealers are using the new specification and more training on setting up GA4. Remember, this is May, the data stops, you know, July, 2023. So if you're a person who likes to visually learn or learn with others, live training is going to be available. And, and this is one of the best uh, conferences for digital marketing. And, and the website is digitalmarketingstrategies.org. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, should be good. Uh, moved from California over to Austin. So I'm sure you have a great conference there. All right. So for those of you stuck around with three minutes left, here it is, the ASC GA4 Looker Studio Report. Not Data Studio Report. That's no longer the name. Okay. Yeah, we had it's a good think Looker. about that at the event. <laughs> so at the conference, they, basically everybody was saying, hey, what's Looker? What's Looker all about? And Tom let us know why it's called Looker. Um, Apparently there was an acquisition of the company Looker. And so that's what yeah, this is here. Billion. <laughs> so it's no more data studio report. It's Looker studio report. However, the bit.ly for the Looker studio report for GA4 is actually ASC underscore data underscore studio. Cause we did it before Looker with Looker was part of the word, but here, here it is here. And I encourage everybody to go to this website bit.ly slash ASC underscore data underscore studio. And here, basically a lot of the, what I talked about is all summarized in one cool report. Um, you can make your own copy. You see here, there's three dots at the top. Uh, and basically, if you're logged in to the exact same uh, property as your analytics, it'll just say, hey, do you want to connect these two? Yes. When you connect them and make sure everything's ASC spec, you'll get all the data in here. Um, you can uh, do the scroll downs. It's got conversion summaries for, for emails, for calls, for chats, for DRs. You can see here was already the default source medium also some interactions on what happened on your SRPs, VDPs, et cetera. So highly encourage you guys to do your, uh, you know, download that ASAP or, or create your own uh, Looker Studio report. As well, um, we created a, a URL, bit.ly slash ASC underscore specifications, where you actually can get the full ASC spec. Um, and um, I highly encourage you as well, once we send out the deck to give this to your provider if they're already not uh, you know, putting in the spec in. Key takeaways, Claris. Yes, thank you, Evan. And uh, Brian, thank you for answering all the questions coming in from our audience. Um, 
Uh, we did have one member of our audience asking for closed caption. It's not available in Zoom, but we will send a French version with French closed captions to you, anyone who attended the session or registered for the session to ensure that you got all the key um, insights and takeaways. Um, so number one, make sure you familiarize yourself with GA4 features, the differences between universal analytics, um, all those engagement metrics, first click attribution and custom alerts. Um, turn on Google Signals to ensure that you've got demographic interest details and engaged view video conversions. Um, try out the new Explorer section for funnel and path analysis. And as Tom mentioned, you can export that raw data uh, in GA4 free properties now to BigQuery. Um, so you can slice, it, di slice and dice it the way you want to. And don't forget uh, to change the event expiry date from two months to 40 months to ensure that you don't lose any data. And so it is awesome. one o'clock. Yep. Yeah, we just it is one p.m. Right. Just got it right in. Uh, if you can stick around for Q and A, by all means. Um, otherwise, follow us. We always post these tips and things like this, and of course, webinars uh, on our socials on LinkedIn for Auto Sig Moto Insight Traffic and T Advantage on YouTube for Moto Insight and Traffic, and on TikTok for Traffic. And then you can also reach out to Brian as well. His email is there, Brian at BrianPash.com. Brian, it's been awesome. Thank you so much for hopping on with us. If you will see if there's any more questions coming in. And do you think we need to continue the conversation, see how we can set up the in-person training in Toronto? Maybe welcome you to our office. Should be exciting. All right. Having presented, I don't know what the Q&A uh, is, but Clarice, what's going on in the Q&A section? Oh, we have uh, we had lots of questions as you guys were going through your presentation and uh, Brian had answered them. It was in regards to training for the standardization process, uh, which they can join, of course, the Automotive Standard Council and learn um, the members and implementation. Um, and also, if we are going to plan an in-person session, we'll, of course, invite everyone who participated in this session. Um, uh, team members have highlighted it might be challenging when there's a larger dealer group uh, uh, to retrain everyone. Um, but what we have to do is to make sure that we continue to talk about uh, the quality um, of the reporting and KPIs that's going to be available in GA4 and selling everyone on it to understand like what kind of performance measurement you'll be able to get from this. Um, there's some questions around iframes within dealerships that provide in um, automotive standards events. Um, and then Brian answered that software in iframes can send um, ASC events if they work to establish a secure communication layer with a website platform. I think that's yeah. a great question, yeah. Yeah, so Clarice, let me just, um, I, I think iframes should go away, period. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're a pain to everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but things like X time as an example, from Cox has always been an iframe, you know, solution. Um, Cox, because somebody asked the question, you know, is Cox going to uh, provide some support for X time? And uh, things are slow, but they're coming. Um, but here's what we found out, and Ivan was part, and, and Tom was part of these conversations. In order for an iframe to send the proper events in the GA4, they have to set up a secure communication layer with the website provider. And if the website provider doesn't want to do that, then that becomes a problem. So I think there were some discussions on the council that uh, if the website provider was cooperative and the iframe, yeah, yes, the events can fire, but it looks like there's some cooperation that needs to happen. And if, if you don't, uh, if the two parties are fighting with each other, you know, that's a problem. And, and I mean, there were, seems to be the, the data studio link. Yeah. So uh, just to answer a couple of questions here that I saw. So the data studio link is actually case. Um, you have to put the proper case. Ah, uh, look at that. So everybody just put whatever in this it's, I think it's capital A, capital S, capital C, capital D in data, capital S in studio. Ooh. If you don't do that, it won't work. Okay. Look at you. <laughs> Um, there was a couple of other questions. Matt, great question on retraining GMs and dealer principles on the new metric interpretations. Listen, at AutoSync, uh, on our monthly performance review, reviews for traffic and T-Advantage, we've been pushing these slides and, and even deeper training or you know, mini sessions and every month. So by all means, if you would like us to attend a dealer group meeting, um, 
I hope you're still on the call, but that's something that we would do. We do it all the time. And all of our OSCs do this with their, whoever's the contact is every single month. Um, another question uh, that came in, um, I think you've answered most of them, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, um, someone else asked about yeah, there was a question system. whether Google 360 had any benefits. And just so you understand, the specification was built not to use up all the space for the normal GA4 free installation. So you could have up to 50 custom events. And I think we're, I don't know, 30 or something. And, and uh, the parameters that you can put in custom dimensions, I think it's 50 but I don't think we have 50 defined. So um, we wanted to leave some space in the specification to allow people to build their own additional parameters or custom events. So GA360 only gives you more space to be super creative. A couple more questions. Mike Cullen, what's the best way for dealers to bridge the knowledge gap between dealers and vendors? Again, these webinars, um, dealer group meetings, uh, I think Tom wants to answer this live. Sorry, I mean, you are answering live. So I oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Zoom. Uh, Christian from Nova Scotia. Love Nova Scotia. I hope, hope uh, Nova Scotians are still on the call. How do we get assistance setting up J4? Well, with T Advantage, you're taken care of. With traffic, you're taken care of. If, if, you're, if you're part of T Advantage, you're taken care of. So from the T-Advantage uh, uh, scenario, you're taken care of. I'm not sure for other website vendors, by all means, reach out to them and see what they can do for you. Um, but with us, you're taken care of. No, and, and the question is, how do you bridge the gap between dealers and vendors? And, and you know, without sounding weird, um, dealers control the direction of vendors. It's dealers vote with their pocketbooks. And so... Dealers on this webinar or watching the recording, your conversation with your website provider, with your chat provider, with your digital retailing tools should be very simple. I want you to support the ASC specification because I want interoperability, I want transparency, and I want to simplify my reporting. If you don't want to support the specification, then I'll move to someone who will. But for dealer groups, the, the time-saving, the mental anguish, the better group-wide reporting is, is, like I said, in the hundreds of thousands of dollars of time and uh, effort from everyone's part. So um, you can go to the ASC website. You can see all the members. If you don't see one of your key vendors on that list, send them the link and say, please join. I mean, you know, the team, the team here... Uh, was one of the first people who raised their hand and say, Brian, we, we saw the need. We want to make sure that our, our products and solutions are completely transparent. You know, we have the Boulevard Agency, early member of the ASC Council. Um, and I just love the fact that there's a lot of Canadian uh, innovators saying, this makes sense for North America. This is not a U.S. thing. And, and we, of course, we have support in, in Europe as well with a couple uh, key vendors there, but eventually I hope the specification becomes even worldwide. That's why I think it's an awesome initiative, Brian, seeing uh, vendors who are normally competitors in their own space actually come together with that same goal and effort and unite really, uh, which uh, is my side, I think. Yeah, and, and originally I think people thought supporting one spec would loop, reduce their competitive edge. Actually, it increases their competitive edge. Everyone, as Ivan said a hundred times, you know, not just here, but in our conversation, Brian, I love it. It's leveling the playing field. It gets everyone on the same page. It gets everyone using the same language. It gets everyone using the same KPIs. Okay, do people still fudge things? Okay, we can't fix human nature, but what we can do is make it easier to have conversations with our with our website providers, our marketing providers, our third-party merchandising platforms. All of this makes sense. So uh, the good news, Clara says, you mentioned, everyone realized that it saves everyone time, headaches and money, and let's focus on innovation instead of re-answering stupid questions over and over again. I agree. 
All right, I think we're ready to wrap up here. Ivan, we're gonna uh, get some music on just to wind us down <laughs> into the rest of the day. Sure. <laughs> well, uh, I wanna say uh, thank you to everyone who stayed with us till the end. As mentioned, we'll be sending the recording, the deck, um, links to the specifications. If you're not a member and you want to, Brian has already shared the link, but we'll also put that in the follow-up too. Reach out with any questions and re recommendations and um, look out for information uh, on a possible in-person training. Uh, we'll try and make it happen in Q1. Great. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Ivan. Thank you, Tom. Thank Have you. an awesome rest yeah. of the day, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Jack and Diane. American kids grow.